Okay, we um, look at okay, you're early here, and we got a really interesting chapter. And sometimes you ask yourself, okay, what is this chapter all about? Some chapters in the Bible are very inspirational. You obviously inspirational, right? Where you see Abraham go and rescue his nephew. Wow, such faith. They're really amazing, isn't it? Go and defeat a stronger enemy, things like that. Right? The the one before this, you know, in Genesis 22, you know, how Abraham's faith was tested. He didn't flinch. God asked for his son. And he says he's going to trust that God knows what he's doing. I will give. He literally gave the son to God. Wow, that was a test. And of course, God says, now I know that you fear God. Wonderfully. To see the faith established like that is always wonderful. Right? Okay, just let me have a couple. Hi, hi. Yep, come on in. Hi. No problems. Just, yeah, it's a little bit early. Just yeah. thought of just ref do some reflection work uh, rather than I look at you and you look at me <laughs> with awkwardness. <laughs> Always good to look, look back and reread it and what do we get? Now, today's, well, we, Louis, just to let you know, we have been reading the book of Genesis from chapter 1, and each time that we can meet together, we go chapter by chapter. Uh, a time to just read. My task is not to give you another message. My task at a Bible reading club is to give you some pointers and guidance to read the, the Word of God, in this case, Genesis meaningfully. Okay, so... Uh, now, this is not the same as, therefore, you can read all, everything the same. It, not quite. Okay, so some texts are a little bit more challenging. Some are a little easier. Genesis is a easier. <laughs> easier. Let's start off with basic first. So, we read the book of Genesis. Now, easy does not mean, uh, you know, this is so basic that it's not worth reading. Of course not. Remember, the Word of God, they're rich truths. It's a question of whether you would search for them, discover them for yourselves. Okay, hi John. <laughs> Good to have you here. Good. Right, well, thank you for persevering and saying want to be here and that you would want to read together like this. Okay, well, we begin with a word of prayer. Our Father, we thank you for the challenge to read the Scriptures meaningfully. We pray that you would help us to discover that there is delight in knowing your Word a little bit better. Uh, may we pray, uh, we pray that you would be with us once again. Encourage our hearts to faith in a deeper faith, a stronger faith in the Lord Jesus too. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, we're up to chapter twenty. Three, which is a very interesting, it's like I said, one of those texts you think, how come this is included in the Bible? Because Genesis 23 is about Abraham looking for a burial ground for the wife who passed on. Is that important? Sometimes we think, okay, as believers, we, um, we believe in God, yeah, we will. You know, our spirit will be with the Lord in heaven. And uh, then what happens to the physical body that is there? Is it important? Right? Okay, anything will do. Just don't worry about it. Anything will do. Is that a Christian perspective? No. no. Far from it. Chapter 23 will tell you no. That we honour the, the dead. Not, not honour as in, you know, but we, there is a burial that there is the idea of a send-off, and it's important too. Okay? The whole chapter 23 is about securing a burial ground for the wife. Now, that's interesting. What do you learn from it? Okay, well, have a read. Read it for yourself. If you've never read this chapter before, the best thing to do is to read it, and then uh, go.
Go ahead, if you want, you can ask questions, but I want to highlight some things for you to see that you can you know, look at it and hopefully it can become very, very meaningful and when you do a second reading next time. But do a first reading first. Uh, chapter 23, go ahead and, and read for yourself. Yeah. Sure. We all, all, all roughly, more or less. <laughs> the whole, whole chapter, by the way, later on, you know, if you want to go back and take your more time, you can. The whole chapter is the conversation between Abraham and the sons of Heth to acquire a, what, you know, we, we, I think we can all, this is called a burial place. Right? A burial place that is to be given and to utilize there. Yeah. Yeah, well, later on we'll come to that. Is it, see, is it important? Right? If it's not important, whole chapter dedicated to it. Why not one sentence? Done. Right? So this is important. How come? You know, you, you got so many things to talk about and uh, you know, go ahead and uh, this is a place and this is a burial ground. Uh, right? So for this is your... Well, remember, this is your wife. This is your wife for how many? 127 years. Of course, they weren't married for 127. We don't know uh, how long they have been married for. Okay, so when we first know about Abraham in Genesis 12, Abraham was 75, right? When he first uh, got called. Now, the wife is 10 years younger than Abraham, so she would have been 65, Right? When did she have a, a baby? When she was 90. Abraham was 100. And then we read um, 127. Uh, she passed, right? She passed on at 127 years. Okay, is this... Now, the focus, don't be so caught up with just burial place. It just tells us something. You see, how we go about doing things reflect who we are. Is Abraham known to the people around that region? Yes. He's called Abraham the Jew. They all know he's a person who profess that his God is the God of creator. This is his God. He, he, he mentions it. This is all well known now. Now, how do you conduct yourself? How do you even honour the dead? Do you honour the dead? With respect. Right? Now, but let's take a look at this. Let's break it down a little bit. I, I really appreciate how the Bible looks at life and looks at death. <clears throat> you see, we look at death and we say 127 years and she died, you know, uh, you know, what a loss. You know, she died. She died at 100. We all you know, died. Let's take a look at, just read it again. I, I like how it is mentioned. Chapter 23, Sarah lived 127 years. These were the years of the life. This is how the Bible looks at life and death. Rather than to look at what God takes, <clears throat> in death, God bring a person. God has taken. The Bible teaches us to look at what God has given. God has given to Sarah 120 years of life. We just look at 27, died. Here is life. Where there is 60 years of life, or 40, or 30, the Scriptures teaches us it's not what God takes, it what is what God has given. Do we know how to thank God for what He has given? No matter how many those years may be. Right? 127 years she lived 
years of the life of Sarah. Another thing we can look at, God fulfilled His promises to Sarah. So many live with unfulfilled lives. Right? Just, you can live, but live unfulfilled lives. She has lived fulfilled. God has fulfilled that promise to her. That's what God is like. All right? You will have a child. She, she struggled with that initially. How can it be? I, my husband is 100. I am 90 years old. How is it possible? She really struggled. Inside her heart, she laughed. She doubted. Well, God sent an angel to be there to, to confront her, to help her address unbelief. Right? Unbelief must be addressed. And so, she, she addressed it and she found faith in God. 90. And she has lived with that faith. And when the sun came, there was a spark of faith. A joy and you know, calling the sun, naming the sun, holding the sun. Now she, that faith has come to another. That was 90 years old. Right? How do we look at our life? How many years have God given you? Why must we look at it as, oh, God has taken? No, God has given. God has given. Mm. Oh, we'll come to that. It's, you see, it's Abraham. It's his faith. No, no, nothing special about him. The only person special is God. He's just as normal. Sorry? Yeah, unfortunately, we shouldn't worship Abraham. Abraham will be upset with you if you worship him. Okay, so in heaven, you see Abraham and you worship him. You'll be, what's wrong with you? Uh, all his life, he's been sharing his faith and the only one person we should worship is God. No, there's nothing in that sense special. If we want to say special, yes, we are all God's children. We are all special. But the point of this, remember, the New Testament will say, Abraham is an example of faith. Did he struggle? Yes. Did he struggle with unbelief? Yes. But you know what? He found faith, even as an old man. 75, he began. He learned how to read, you know, at 75, it's like starting all over again to learn about life and faith is no easy task. Right? You try to learn how to ride a bicycle at 75. <laughs> Just in case. You're going to fall down and no, it's not going to happen. The older we get, the more fearful we are to learn anything. All the things that we know is actually what we learned when we were younger. When we were younger, we would do it. To learn at 75 will tell you this is quite... And he took some time. He did. It took him some time. But you see, this faith has become part of him. He has become an honourable person. In the past, not very honourable. Tell lies. You look at his life, it's changed. He used to tell lies. He used to use the wife as, you know, you lie on my behalf because just in case they kill me. What kind of person, what kind of husband is this? That life changed. Look at how, I mean, you read how the person say, I will give you the, you are the prince, you're famous, you know, you, you are, look, go ahead, take this land. Any other common person would have taken it. Oh, but my wife is dead anyway. Well, it's, it's for free, isn't it? I'll just take it. Don't dishonor yourself, Abraham. He's not going to take a free thing. He can afford it. He will pay in full price. How much is this? Look at him. Look at it. How much is this? No, no, no. Go ahead. Take it. You know, we respect you. It will be our honour to have your dead be buried in our place. You can have the cave. Take it. No, 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 no. He humbles himself. He bow down. No, no, no. Uh, how much is it? No, take it. No, I, I insist. How much is it? We pay full price. He's become an honourable man. It's not a burial ground. 
It's for who has He become. Who cares about the, the, the thing here? It's who you are in the way you conduct yourself, in the way you regard. See, for us, we give everyone we, we come, we will give them a decent and honourable. Honourable is the word burial because this is our faith. Man is made in the image of God. We will honour God by doing this. That's why it's important. He chose a good place, good location. Anywhere that is good location, you pay high price. Of course. Yes, everywhere. It's not because he believed in feng shui. You know, wow, you know, it, that's not his, the thing. The thing was what he did just tells you the kind of honour he had. You see, with the body is on the ground. The soul is with the Lord. That's not a problem. Right? We will be... But when do we... Do we do burials? Do we do funerals? Yes. We apply the same principle. Because what we do reflects who we are. But my question is not so important because for us till now, yes. our parents stay at very high school yes. place. But we don't go and visit. Yes. So like yeah. Yes, Un unfortunately, yes. You see, to us, we look at the high price. We look at the price and we say we must wait, make every moment count the cost of the thing. Nobody, I mean, we all, if all those of us who have, I, I do funerals and I have you know, buried loved ones and I look into the details of this, they're costly. Singapore, even more costly. What I mean is the place culture, the ashes they take. Yes. Yeah. To, to me, yeah. I speak for myself. Yes. I tell my children, yeah. don't, don't pay yeah. thousands of dollars right. for this. Yes. Take the money and feed the poor. Yes. So See, that's, Auntie Lillian, that's your perspective. Yeah. And that's a very practical perspective. Yeah. But what the scriptures teaches us is to move beyond just practical. Do we have to bury well, the ashes? Well, no. Look at this. You see, part is his faith. Part is his understanding. Part is the way that he will honour the person. Now, he's a rich man. If a rich man still wants freebie, something is wrong with you. It's very interesting. It's, it's not, you see, it, under Lillian, you've got to understand. No, understand. He's, he's, he's a wealthy man. No, it, it means it's a very important yeah. thing. Wealthy, and then how would you honour? Because what we do will, it's, you see, burial, memorial, service is not for the dead. It really isn't. It's for the living. It's for the living. It's for the son. It's for the community. They will look to Abraham. How do you go about handling the affairs of life and death? Right? If, look, put it this way. If he didn't do anything, you know what? Uh, she lived a good life, God bless you, in heaven anyway. Just let her body, anywhere will do. Wow. That straight away would tell you, you are not an honourable man. It's not about how much or the price or practical, nobody visits me. Look, even if people visit you, you're not there. It's a memorial. A burial is a memorial. Now, by the way, Hebron will become a very special place. This place will be called Hebron. It's a memorial. What is a memorial? Are memorial important? Answer, yes. It is for us to remember and honour not just the person's death, but to see how she has lived a life of faith. Anything that we do, we handle, we speak of faith, we do it with integrity, we do it with... If he was haggling the price... Can you give me cheaper? 400 shackles. Can you give me discount? It's not about whether you secured this place. He could have got it for free. Free. He will not. That will teach us something about not just Sarah. Don't miss the point. It's about a burial ground. It's got nothing. The focus is not a burial ground. Where is this burial ground today? Somewhere in West Bank. Right? That's... Totally not the focus. It's how they went about doing this. They honoured. 
they remembered. Does our Christian faith teach us to have this kind of honour even in comes to funeral and burial? Absolutely. Absolutely. We mustn't think we are so heavenly that we've, we are not practical in any sense of the world. Of course we are. There's honour. Remember, how would you bear witness of your faith? These are people who don't believe in God. If they look at you and you say you are a person who believes in the real God and you can't even give a proper burial to your wife, please, don't tell me about your God. I'm disgusted. Because other people know how to bury their dead. They're not going to haggle and how much and how much. Oh, it's a waste of money. person's dead anyway. See, it's not the money. It's your honour. It's how you regard. So what do we do? I, you know what? The person must be honoured. Now, of course, today you have many of it. You know, there are many, many things. The person can be cremated. The person can be buried. You don't need to find a cave. Thank goodness. Right? That's one thing for sure. It's, it's very different. Time has moved on. You, you can't just buy whatever plot of land you can and say, I'm going to be buried. You can't. You've got to go to a proper cemetery. But you still buy a plot. It's just that your plot of land has shrunk to, you see, just like that. And you can have, you know, dig deeper. That's, that's all you're given. You work with times have changed. You see, the focus is not, oh, is the burial ground? Must it be here? Must it be this big? Not, not the point. The burial ground is a burial ground. It is a place where it becomes a memorial for the living. Right? So, well, is it important? The answer is yes. Is it important to us today? To me, I look at this, it's a wonderful example. Right? Absolutely wonderful example. Now, can I, can I just go beyond this, uh, please, a little bit? Because this was, is more than this. What we want to look at is not how she died. This is, yeah, did, she, did she have, well, was she had a heart attack? Or she, no, this is not. Remember, she lived 120 years. She lived her life. What was her life like? That's important. What would you be remembered for? Remember, a, a memorial is a remember. What would you be remembered for? Uh, she will be remembered for her faith. Now, the, t turn with me to the book of Hebrews. Now, this is passed down through the generation. Now, that, to me, is something. Right? So, Hebrews chapter 11, we read in verse 11. Sarah, by faith, by faith, Sarah. Sarah will be remembered, right? So this is her, this is her, rather than she just lived 120 years old, right? So there she is, Sarah. Okay, what will be written about you? What would you be remembered for? Rather than, you, we've seen funeral bulletins, the person was how old? Well, for Sarah, she was 127 years old. And the God called her home. That's it. See, the focus is not just, okay, she died. But she lived. And somewhere along the way, she found, finally found this faith that she could live by. She lived by her faith. It may not be that at the start, it wasn't. It may not even be, be when, before she was pregnant, it wasn't. She still doubted very much. But when baby came, when she was pregnant and baby came, not only baby grew inside her, faith grew inside her. Now, we read about her faith and what it was like. By faith, Sarah herself also received strength. This faith gave her strength. I mean, you kind of need strength. To bear a child at that age, all the strength. See? When you are able to live by faith, that faith 
can give, that faith can, you know, God can give strength. She received strength to conceive and then bore a child. When she was past the age, obviously, of childbearing. Now, what was this faith about? Because she judged him, which is God, faithful who had promised. That is her faith. She finally says, you know what, I now, not, not judge as in being judgmental. No, she has to think through it. She, it took her time. And now she can say, God has proven himself. He is a faithful God. What he say, he promised, he will do. She began to believe that is to be true. Initially, she just quietly listened. My husband says he believes, but she says, okay, yeah, I follow you. You're my husband, right? I'll follow wherever you go. I'm already married to you. But notice, she never say very much. But when she was told, you are the one who will be, she laughed with unbelief. There was unbelief there, right? So if her husband is 75, she would be 65. From 65 to 90, she didn't have faith. Uh, when she did, she lived by this faith that God is faithful. He is faithful to His word. He is faithful to His promise. And that gave her strength. I mean, to live from 90 to 127. Look, we can live long and you live with no strength. It's a, it's a, it's a nightmare. You've got no strength to do anything. Can you imagine what kind of life is that? She still had strength. Of course, older, but still there was strength. Strength to believe, strength to trust, rather than to just totally weak, nothing left. That faith in God gave her strength. Faith in the faithful God. God who promised is faithful. We all need to find that faith. She will be remembered for believing. Her faith, she lived by it. You see, it's not where you buried. You want to be in Fremantle, you want to be in um, Karakata, North or South, that's entirely up to you. That, to me, is not the most important thing. You know, have a good burial, a proper burial, you're right, right? If you can afford a funeral that is going to be, you have the whole entire place decorated with flowers, it's up to you, right? But if you can't, you have just a bouquet of flowers, just as beautiful. The point is, you know what? It's your faith that is going to be most beautiful. We will honour the person. Right? When I was a student pastor, I, we have done funerals for literally billionaires and for people who don't have a dollar to their name. What is the funeral like? Exactly the same. We honour the person who is not rich or the person who is very, very wealthy in her lifetime. Same honour. What do we honour? The person's life. Life. Right? Her husband is, of course, able to afford all those things. That's fine. But what do we honour? We honour her faith. This is what it must be. Now, she lived by it. What else was she wrong? The example of how she lived out that faith. Now, that is interesting. Yeah, some of us, you know, sometimes we're not familiar with passages like that. I take marital counselling, and so I have to know passages like this. And it is challenging, but it's there. You know, Sarah became an example of how to be a good wife. Now, that's interesting. In the earlier part, not so good. Very demanding. Later part, when faith came in, it changed. Now, take a look at 1 Peter 3, and uh, it, be she it became a very, uh, you know, it really helped. And so Peter was uh, encouraging those who are wives. Did, right? Just like pastors sometimes must encourage those who are wives. Right? And that can be very difficult. And so, 1 Peter 3, Peter says to those who are wives, 
Christian wives, it says to them, likewise be submissive to your own husband. Huh. Obviously, it was a very difficult thing to do. <clears throat> right? Then and now. Right, yeah, yeah, see, you all agree, yes. Now, <laughs> even if some do not obey the word, meaning, say for example, if your husband is a non-Christian, say for example, they don't know the Lord, they, should you still be submissive? <laughs> even if they, without a word, may be won by your conduct. Yes. <laughs> Can they be encouraged by you? You know, one person was literally, this actually happened. Uh, his name is Lee Strobel. Right? The wife was a very feisty woman and all that, very scared of her. And, but he loves the wife. But the wife came to faith in Christ. The more she learned about the Lord, the more she looked about the character of Christ, she changed. She was, he was stunned. <laughs> he became a Christian because of the... He, because of the wife, actually. He started to investigate the Christian faith. He started to look into, how come? Is it really possible that a person like my wife can change? To him, it was quite impossible. He's learned to just accept her. But she, you know, she became gentle. She became submissive. Huh, what happened? Now, this actually ha can happen. Verse 2, when they observe your chaste conduct, accompanied by fear. You fear the Lord, you revere God. That's the thing. Uh, do not let your adornment be merely outward, arranging the hair. Sorry, ladies. True, isn't it? All right? No, Peter has nothing against fashion. He has nothing against girl, you know, ladies. You take a fair bit of time in the, mm, doing your hair and all that. But let it not be the only thing. Right? hair, wearing gold, putting on fine apparel. Now, nothing wrong with that, but rather let it be the hidden person of the heart, the incorruptible beauty of gentle, quiet spirit, which is very precious in the sight of God. Yes. And then he says, For in this manner in former times, the holy women who trusted in God also adorned themselves. You see, it's not just the external, but you adorn with yourself with the character of faith inside you that is beautiful, that is precious in the sight of God. And the person that Peter highlights is Sarah. Look at this. Being submissive to your own husband, verse 6, as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters you are, if you do good, not afraid with any terror. Of course, he also talks to the husband. He didn't just talk to the wife and left it there. He says to the husband, Husband, likewise, dwell with... This is interesting. Likewise, dwell with them, meaning your wife, with understanding. Huh? That's really challenging too. Try to understand your wife. Try to be more understanding. So it's both ways. It's not just one. And then says, giving honour to your wife. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know what? It's husband and wife. But what if a person don't know the Lord and, you know, one person came to faith later? Can you still practice this? Yes. Because your, how you live out your faith, your conduct, could really encourage another person to consider faith themselves. They see you change. They see your character. They see your genuineness. There's integrity, you know, there is submissiveness rather than yelling and demanding. Look, this is what it is. Right? So you look at Sarah. It was, she became an example. That she's remembered. Till the New Testament. Oh, that's, leave behind. Don't just die. <laughs> Don't just die and that's it. You know what? Find a faith that you can live by. Become an example in your own life and that is going to be worthwhile. You are remembered for your faith. You are an example to the others, for a man to the other man, for the lady to the other. You are a wife, be a good example. You inspire those who are wives. It can be done. Wow.
there we go. A lot of you know, ladies read this and say, sorry, it doesn't work. I've tried, it doesn't work. Ha! Huh. See, it can be done. Sarah was not like this in the past. And she trusted God. I've got to live by, but give me strength. <laughs> He's got to live a lot of strength. You know what? She would say, Abraham, you know what? I'll, you, you are the head of the house. God has made you the head. I'll take, I'll follow your lead. Wow, that is not easy. I will trust the God that you trust. I'll follow your lead. Yeah, she stood out. She really stood out there. Okay, so this is what we look at. So you don't look at it. I look at the first few lines. She lived. She lived. God give us life. How long, how short is determined by God, not us. But what do you do with this life? God has given this life. You know what? When the time comes, when the Lord calls our home, I, I hope, I pray that I can speak of your faith. And I can speak of your example. Right? Before all people. And we thank God for, for you. That would be wonderful. Okay? All right. Yeah, well, I hope this will be a bit more, uh, you know, reading this. Read it again if you wish, but don't just get stuck on details like burial ground. And uh, it's just the honor, the way he handled it, the way he looked for it. You know what? He honored the wife. He honored the wife. Right? Okay. Okay. Well, any, anything you want to raise up? Well, may you find that faith and live by it. You receive strength. We all need strength. I need strength. Right? And the older you get, the more strength you need. More strength. By faith, receive strength. Thank God for that strength until the Lord calls us home. Okay, well, we pray together. Our Father, we pray this afternoon that we would be challenged to find faith in you. You have given us all time, life on earth, to discover, to experience faith. May we find it sooner than later that we may make this life count significantly. It takes a lifetime to develop faith and we recognize we need that strength and grace. We pray that you would help and encourage our hearts to see the examples we read in the scriptures and to say it can be done by faith. We pray in Jesus' name.